Hello, everyone. We're back here, and we're ready to start, and I'm so happy to be here. It's, uh, this is, thri I mean, thrilling. I've been to a number of spaces recently, you know, where people are getting together again, and to see everyone in this space, which yet has to start these opportunities and these events, and, uh, and I'm so thrilled to have you here as the first time we've ever done anything like this in this space. Um, but good afternoon and welcome. We would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the territory of the Clallam, Sklallam, meaning strong people. We welcome you to their lands, which they have stewarded throughout the generations and are the original and traditional peoples of this land. We thank them for their strength and resilience in protecting this land, and we honor their ancestors, past, present, and future and recognize their continued contributions to society. In 2016, Donna Morris left the largest charitable bequest that Clallam County had ever seen, a little over $9 million, to be used for the design, construction, and ongoing operation of a premier performing arts center. And in 2023, Donna's dream will be realized. We've called this press conference today to share with you that construction will restart on August 1st, less than two months from now. And, yeah. It's big news that our our COVID-induced construction pause will be over. Field Arts and Events Hall will be open to the public July 1st, 2023. Um, once, once Field Hall is open, we can fulfill our mission, which is to be a home for arts and events that brings people together and strengthens our community. While Donna empowered this project with her initial gift, many other angels and contributors have stepped in with their time, treasure, and talent, like Dorothy Field and Pat Donlin, also our board of directors. I'd like our board of directors to stand and be recognized as, as they are an incredibly hardworking, visionary group of leaders. Please stand. I'd like you, to, I'd like you guys to, to stay standing. Stay, stay standing, please, because um, a couple of people who couldn't make it today, but I do want to recognize them, uh, the McGraw Family Foundation, um, they, they have a special place. They, they've supported us, and, um, and they have a special place that we've dedicated to our literary arts. Um, but also, I want to move on now to our pillar, our, our, our pillars of the community. If you are a pillar of the community, I'd like you to please stand. And if you could stay standing as well, the pillars of the community have sponsored one of these beautiful wooden pillars that frame the building. Lastly, if you're a box office seat holder, I'd like you to please stand. And if you've contributed to the creation of this project, please stand where you are. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is an incredible, incredible group of people who are bringing Field Arts and Events Hall to life. It's your work and your contributions. I also want to recognize our small staff. Uh, we're small but mighty. We have Sherry Jessup, who is uh, welcoming people. We've got Jamie Coffey in the back. We've got Chris Fiddler. Uh, and although not officially staff, but works as hard as any of the staff, is our board treasurer, Gene Martin. Thank you, Gene, and the staff.
I'd also like to announce today our tagline as Field Hall for All will be known, as Field Arts and Events Hall will be known as Field Hall for All. We believe this honors Donna Morris's love for Port Angeles, the arts, and the vibrant arts culture that exists here. Donna believed that the performance groups and the residents of Port Angeles deserves a world-class venue, and here it is, and it's truly for everyone. Also in accordance with Donna's vision, Field Hall for All envisions an inclusive, accessible venue for our partners, the Port Angeles Symphony Orchestra, the Juan de Fuca Foundation for the Arts, the Port Angeles Fine Arts Center, the Community Players, the City of Port Angeles, Peninsula College, and Peninsula College Foundation. What can you expect from Field Hall and the Field Hall for All initiative? I'd like to share just a couple of those initiatives for you. We'll have a Washington Local Series which features and promotes virtuosic performers from throughout the state. We'll initiate a Pay It Forward Series, which is a free series of performances paid for in full by the generosity of Field Hall donors. We will have flexible and dynamic pricing so that families and low-income patrons can access the arts without worry. We'll have free educational programs such as Peninsula Performs, serving public schools with, the arts, with arts integrated learning. And we'll have a lunchtime learning series that will be here in this building in our lobby. Utilizing the city park with outdoor concerts, including a series called Music and a Meal, right here on Pebble Beach, just to the north of the windows here. Field Hall for All believes in universal access so that everyone, no matter what your barrier may be, can enjoy this community asset. Performances are not the only reason for Field Arts and Events Hall. On July 1, 2023, the 400-person conference center, the coffee shop, the visual arts gallery, and a learning lab to support a media technician certificate program in partnership with Peninsula College will all be open. While Field Hall ge gears up towards our opening, we will continue to remain focused on the comprehensive vision of the Port Angeles Waterfront Center which includes the addition of the Marine Discovery Center for Ocean Research, Learning and Stewardship, and the Lower Elwha Clallam Cultural Center, a place to share history, culture, and art of the Clallam people. Before I turn over the mic to the next speaker, I just want to recognize a couple more people in the audience. Um, I'd like to recognize Julie Adams and Cam Irwin, who are lead architects for this space from LMN Architects. Marvin Doster and Kyle Paulson from Mortensen Construction. Larry Bjork of Vanner Construction Management. Without them, there would be no field hall. I also want to thank Casey Duff from Senator Cantwell's office, from, uh, who's our Peninsula Outreach Director, for being here. So thank you again, all of you, for your contributions and all of you to be here. I now want to turn the program over to Judge Brooke Taylor, our board president, whose birthday is today. He just had to say it, didn't he? <laughs> You're in trouble. I've... Hi. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. I've got three brief items I want to touch on that have to do with our ongoing capital campaign as we approach the finish line. And I started working on this in 2016. And we didn't really get any idea what this building was going to look like until about 2018. And then when we saw the initial renderings of the building, and particularly the one of the lobby downstairs, showing those 38-foot glue lamb Douglas fir timbers. I was really captivated by, number one, what a great tribute they were to the forest products industry in this timber town, 
and just how stunning they were. So one day in early 2019, Chris Fiddler and I, our previous executive director, who's now proper project manager, were driving to Squim for a presentation, and I'd been thinking about this a lot. So he's driving. I said, okay, Chris, I got an idea. Don't tell me I'm crazy. Just hear me out. Give me a chance. So I said, is there any reason why we couldn't add these beautiful timbers to our naming rights campaign, which was all pretty well developed? And maybe we could come up with something clever, like call them pillars, and the donors would be pillars of the community. And he actually didn't think I was crazy. He thought it was a pretty good idea. And the two of us sat down and fleshed it out, and I made a proposal to our board in March of 2019, which was about six months before we broke ground. And uh, I said, the only thing that's left to decide is, how are we going to price these naming rights? And we had ideas everywhere from 10,000 up to 100,000, everything in between. And like our board of directors has done so many times since the beginning, I think our board hit the sweet spot with a $25,000 price tag because all 65 of those pillars sold within a year. And we've already recognized some of those pillars and asked them to stand up. I won't do that again. But I do want to mention, as you wander around the building today, if you have a chance, you'll notice little temporary name tags on each one of those glue lamb timbers that has the name of the purchased who donated the money to get their name on that pillar. Now, those are going to be replaced by name plates that are manufactured by our own Carbon Recycling Technology Center out at the airport. So they'll be made out of recycled carbon fiber with a, a Douglas fir wood veneer on it, just like the beams, and then the name will be etched in them and they'll be put on those. So uh, another case of collaborating with one of our local industries uh, to get something unique and special. Now I want to talk about something that's very current and this is the hottest ticket in town. We have just launched our Take a Seat campaign. And when I started making presentations in 2016, I always got asked the question, are you going to have naming rights for the seats? Because every theater does that's owned by a nonprofit. And I said, yes, but when the time is ready. Well, the time is ready now. Seats have been ordered, and all five of them, 100 of them, will be installed by next spring. So we have 500 seats, 350 in the orchestra level, and 150 in the balcony level. We have 10 boxes, which use up 50 seats. And the people that bought the boxes get the right to name the seats in their box. Okay, that's only fair. So that leaves... Uh, 450 seats, of which 62 have already been sold. 388 are still available. I'm not going to tell you they're going like hotcakes, but sales are steady, and we've just started going public with this. And we have adopted what I think is a very sensible four-tier pricing structure. Those seats uh, vary from 2,500, 5,000, 7,500 up to 10,000 for the front row orchestra, front row balcony. And the idea was to provide pricing that suited every budget. So everybody that wanted to be invested in this building and leave some kind of a name legacy could do that. And keep in mind, like all of our other naming rights, you can take five years to pay off the amount uh, that you've pledged to purchase that seat. That will raise, when we are done, $3,125,000, believe it or not, just the naming rights to those seats, and we're just getting started. That is a full month of construction, finishing this building, starting in August. So I think for anybody who's interested in getting in at this stage of the game and helping us cross that finish line, I think this is a great way to invest and leave a legacy in this building. Now, finally, and perhaps most important, 
I want to recognize a very, very special donation. You have just learned that construction is going to resume on August the 1st, which we are absolutely thrilled about. And one of the many factors that led our board of directors to make the decision to restart construction, and by far the most impactful single factor, was the gift of $2 million from First Federal Bank. This is far and away our largest corporate gift to date and actually just knocked our socks off. This will fund, again, an entire month of construction as we move through an eight-month construction period to get this building done. And I think it demonstrates more than anything else uh, the, the level of support that we have received from the Clallam County community uh, since we first went public in July of 2016. And this demonstration of community support came at an absolutely critical time. Uh, for the construction of this building. I think First Federal's effort in this regard defines what we call community banking. And we look forward to a long and mutually beneficial partnership with First Federal. I want to thank their board, uh, their staff, uh, for coming up. This is a board decision. It's a big one for them. It's just like it's a big one for us. And I particularly want to thank their president and chief executive officer, Matt Dynes, and I want everybody to give him a round of applause because he's next. I think this is my first press conference, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that and uh, appreciate everyone for joining us online and all of you who are here in person. It's so great to be here. You know, over the years, when I've thought about Port Angeles, one of the things that I've felt like we were missing out on is enjoying the view. And if you just look off to your left, you can see this unbelievable view. And I cannot wait until the stairway is open and we can walk up the stairs and get that breathtaking view as you, as you come up the, that last few stairs. It's going to be absolutely incredible, and, and we're so excited to be a big part of that. We're so proud to be a part of the story that brings Field Hall to life. Nearly 100 years ago, we were founded right here in Port Angeles, Washington. First Fed has been a part of this community for all of those years, and we are so proud of our heritage here on the North Olympic Peninsula. Field Hall did not happen by accident. It was the vision and generosity of Donna Morris and Dorothy Field, along with the support of so many people who are here today and others who have contributed to this effort, including our phenomenal board of local leaders. There have been countless hours put into planning, fundraising, construction, hiring, programming, and so on. We chose to sponsor Field Hall because we know the value of the arts. We also know the benefit of the jobs, not only here at the Hall, but at the local shops and restaurants, jobs at the Port Angeles Wharf and the local hotels. There will be jobs for bankers, accountants, and attorneys. There will be opportunities for teachers, coaches, doctors, and dentists, all because of this great economic engine of Field Hall. These opportunities are here for all of the business owners here who make up the fabric of our amazing community. As a part of our contribution to Field Hall, we will be sponsoring First Fed Community Conversations. These will be events that will bring local and regional leaders as speakers to the Port Angeles community. This will be a place for the community to gather and to exchange ideas about topics which are relevant to the North Olympic Peninsula, the state of Washington, our country, and the world. For much of its history, Port Angeles has been known for its incredible forests. This led to the timber and logging industry being here and the related lumber mills being such a big part of our community. We have wonderful schools here, including Peninsula College, who will be working and partnering with Field Hall. We also have incredible medical facilities and a variety of wonderful companies who are headquartered and operate right here. We know that tourism, cultural events, and outdoor activities such as hiking, boating, fishing, and skiing are becoming a bigger and bigger part of our economy. Field Hall will be a regional and national draw for the performances and the arts and events. These events will draw many people into our community. 
As has happened for many of us, once they come to our community, we know they will want to stay for days, weeks, or a lifetime. Field Hall is also the linchpin for many other projects here in downtown uh, Port Angeles. As the hall opens, other projects are underway which will transform the way that people live, visit, and enjoy Port Angeles. Opportunity abounds here. Field Hall is a shining example of the people of Port Angeles saying, yes, we can. And look at this beautiful result. This is one of the grandest views on the peninsula and in all of the world from the upper level of this conference space. It is absolutely breathtaking. The best part of Field Hall, however, will be the people from the community who come here to enjoy performing arts and events. They will get to enjoy all of the programming, including the first fed community conversations. As an entity which started in 1923, First Fed is thrilled to be a part of the unveiling of Field Hall in 2023. I look forward to seeing all of you at the grand opening. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Jonathan Pasternak, music director, executive director, and conductor of the Port Angeles Symphony Orchestra. I've been a proud member of this wonderful community for seven years now. A community is truly wonderful when it can support a thriving symphony orchestra for 90 years. That's right. The Port Angeles Symphony was founded 90 years ago in 1932 during the Great Depression and has operated continuously since then. With over a dozen concerts during its nine-month season, the Port Angeles Symphony Orchestra performs often at near capacity at its longtime home, the 1,153-seat Acoustic Marvel, which is Port Angeles High School Performing Arts Center while the Port Angeles Chamber Orchestra plays more intimate concerts at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Port Angeles and Trinity United Methodist in Squim. The symphony is also the proud parent, proud parent organization that is, of a now four-year-old summer chamber music festival called Music on the Strait, the brainchild of two local natives and childhood friends, now both world-class musicians, James Garlick and Richard O'Neill. James, are you there? <clears throat> the Port Angeles Symphony enjoys a strong relationship with our region's school music programs. In any given season, up to 10% of the orchestra's membership is comprised of talented high school students, many who are products of Port Angeles' nationally acclaimed school string program. The symphony also sponsors a highly successful education program, Adventures in Music, which sends small music ensembles to elementary schools throughout the North Olympic Peninsula as far to the east as Quilcene and to the west, Nia Bay, for fun and informative educational concerts. The Port Angeles Symphony is a not-for-profit 501c3 organization depends upon donations from individuals, businesses, foundations, as well as ticket revenue for its existence. The support from our community has been incredibly enthusiastic and generous, even though these last two extraordinarily fraught years. And I'm happy to report that we are currently operating in the black. The Port Angeles Symphony continues to build strong ties to its community, enjoying flourishing relationships with other arts and service organizations, most notably the Juan de Fuca Foundation for the Arts. On behalf of the symphony, I want to express my excitement and my great hopes about what this impressive new building and organization will bring to our region. Planning and financing for the Field Arts and Events Hall has been an enormous undertaking, and I applaud all of those responsible for their hard work and dedication in realizing this community's long-held dream 
of a dedicated events and conference center in downtown Port Angeles, which, along with its multi-purpose auditorium, is a dream that will soon become physical reality. Although the final construction design of the auditorium will not be large enough to accommodate the full 75-member Port Angeles Symphony Orchestra on its stage, I still look forward to exploring the many other projects that will be possible in partnership with the Field Arts and Events Hall. Thank you very much and see you at the symphony and I'll turn it over to Carrie Chance of the Juan de Fuca Foundation for the Arts. Hi there. The Juan de Fuca Foundation for the Arts has been sharing arts and culture with the North Olympic Peninsula since our founder, Karen Hannon, introduced the Juan de Fuca Festival in 1993. Karen's vision was to enrich the community and create greater access to the arts. Now entering our 30th year, we are proud to have taken that vision into a year-round presenter and purveyor of the arts, focusing on bringing high-caliber artists to the area while ticket, keeping ticket prices low and creating educational opportunities for our youth. We've been able to grow and thrive because of the incredible community partnerships um, and looking around, um, as I walked in, I could see so many of them. Uh, this year, the Lower Ella Clallam Tribe provided culture and language teachers to our local schools that helped to create our festival's student art exhibit featuring traditional Clallam drums. First Fed sponsored our community tent, which gave home to local nonprofits looking to reach more people and provide resources and entertainment during our festival. And I'm lucky enough today to be sitting next to my good friend Jonathan Pasternak with the symphony, which has become one of our most valued partners. Over the last two years, we've collaborated and commiserated. <laughs> we've talked to each other through the ups and downs, highs and lows of COVID. We've encouraged and assisted each other, and we look forward to many more years working together. We're all connected. Um, I'm sitting out and I'm looking at a friend that I played basketball with. Representative Kilmer's dad was my seventh grade teacher. We all are intertwined in this community. Um, strengthening, the, strengthening the bonds between the organizations is key to success and to creating more opportunities and making this gorgeous piece of the world even a better place to live. Field Hall gives us the opportunity to expand our influence once again and reach even more community members and visitors. We have great hopes that this space, this gorgeous space, will be a permanent part of our programming and that the team at Field Hall will be one of our valued community partners. Good afternoon. I'm so pleased to be here today celebrating the first part of the Port Angeles Waterfront Center campus, Field Hall, as a positive injection of life into the heart of our community, into our downtown, and a demonstration of the real potential our community has the capacity and capability to achieve. Field Hall, incorporating a conference center, will bring year-round life to our downtown through events and conferences. The new capacity will provide opportunities for events previously turned away. Performing arts and conferences will mitigate the, seasonality, the seasonal challenges for our businesses with hundreds of events annually bringing visitors year round. And I would be remiss to not mention, as I said at the groundbreaking, for those of us who attend conferences regularly, the idea of being able to attend a conference five minutes from home rather than five hours is quite compelling. The Waterfront Center is an investment in Port Angeles' future generations, enhancing awareness and education through culture, science, arts, and placemaking. The success of this facility builds on the investments the city has made and plans to continue with waterfront revitalization. We are fortunate that through private generosity, this project enables further appreciation for the amazing waterfront and mountain environment that Port Angeles offers residents and visitors alike, to the previous point about the view. 
I am pleased to be a part of the continued forward momentum of this project and hope that you will join me in encouraging the community to continue to come together to support the development of the entire waterfront campus and the completion of Field Arts and Events Hall. One way that the city was able to support this project was through legislative advocacy, so it is my pleasure to introduce one member of our legislative team, Representative Steve Theringer. Thank you, Mayor, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is pretty awesome, isn't it? I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. Um, we've been through a fairly challenging last few years with the COVID pandemic, and it's accented a lot of weaknesses, gaps, and needs in our social fabric, our supply chain issues, and to staffing shortages and a frayed safety net. It has also highlighted the importance and need for arts to maintain our well-being. We need places like this stunning performance hall to celebrate those parts of the human spirit which help us balance all the negativity and trauma caused by the challenges we face. The Field of Arts and Events Hall is more than wood, glass, and steel. It represents a community responding to a vision of some key donors to create a venue to showcase the arts and people and creativity of the community, young and old. Port Angeles and the North Olympic Peninsula has a history of supporting arts and developing artists and performance, this performance space will enhance those efforts. As we have learned this evening, many people have contributed to this vision. I am grateful to be in a position as capital budget chair in the legislature to have been able to direct $2 million in funding from the, building, from the Arts Fund and Local Communities Fund to help in this effort. I truly believe with all the capital needs the state has from housing to hospitals, which we are funding, if we neglect investments in the arts, we neglect what makes us human. I know there's more to be done before the grand opening, but thank you and well done, Port Angeles. So I would like to introduce Congressman Kilmer, Port Angeles' own Congressman Kilmer, who, as I learned today, was a bass player in the orchestra. <laughs> thank you, hello. I'm so happy to be here. It's, um, it's good to be home. I was in no hurry for these folks to finish their speeches because I just like looking out the window. This was really nice. I say I'm excited to be here in part because this is progress. There's a saying that change is inevitable, but progress is optional. And this is progress. This progress is a testament to the vision of uh, of Donna Morris, of the generous gift from Dorothy Field. It's a testament to folks like Brooke Taylor and the extraordinary uh, members of the board. It's a testament to each of the community pillars who are here and some who aren't here. It's a testament to Steve Rader Ginsburg and Chris Fiddler and the staff. It's a testament to my friend Judith Morris, um, my former team member. Good to see you, Judith. Um, and it's a testament to just the willpower of this community, the can-do spirit of this community to get stuff done. Um, I'm also excited about this um, because this project incorporates a couple of my favorite things. One, economic development. Um, when I graduated PA High, I went and studied economic development policy and then worked in that field professionally. And this project is going to bring, bring people and their pocketbooks to this community, um, the, the, the potential to host um, big uh, conferences here, events here, matters not just to the dollars and cents of this facility, it matters to every restaurant in town, every hotel and bed and breakfast in town, every bookshop in town, every small business in town that will benefit from that. So that's pretty cool. That is progress for this community. Um, on top of that, though, uh, this is a big winner uh, for the arts. And as Steve just said, uh, that matters too. The arts, 
are important, not just for arts patrons, but arts are something that in a far too divided time, arts are things that bring us together. Um, they're also important to the performers, those who make their professions uh, performing, and for people like me, as Steve mentioned, I was a, uh, for um, unathletic kids like me, uh, the string bass was really the option. Uh, so, <laughs> but I, I will tell you, I, and unfortunately my kids inherited my athletic talent, but I have a 16-year-old cellist and a 12-year-old who plays trumpet and has just started the French horn, um, who really practices night and day, usually when I'm on Zoom. Um, <laughs> but I can tell you just how important the arts are to those who participate in them, to our patrons of the arts, and just to driving vitality and innovation in a community. So that's progress, too. Um, I want to I want to mention, um, and I know a representative from Senator Cantwell's office is here. You know, we have a team working at the federal level: Senator Cantwell, Senator Murray, myself, all working through the appropriations process. One to try to secure funding for the National Endowment for the Arts, which hopefully, once this facility opens, programs could be funded through uh, through that avenue for the National Endowment for the Humanities, where programming again could uh, benefit at this facility. And also, importantly, through for the Economic Development Administration, which is an agency that has been historically underfunded, but is really important for supporting economic development projects. And so our oars are in the water to try to support important opportunities like this. Um, and, and we're not done. Uh, I want to celebrate the progress that has been made thus far and all the amazing things that this facility will continue to host. Um, I look forward to coming back soon, and we, were hope we are hopeful we will have something exciting to announce shortly from the federal government, so stay tuned. And with that, thanks again, and count me as a partner. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much to all of our incredible visitors, speakers, for making it here today, sharing your time with us. And that is so much of what we are about, is sharing time, building community, and enjoying some arts experiences. So we have a few performances. We're going to start off with our Lower Elwha Clallam dance group. And then you have a program. You'll take a look at the program. We're going to roll right through our performances. Please give them a hand.
we've been at the high school and for the district, we're excited to um, share something that was written special for this occasion because if we hit the actual drums, it may explode your eardrums. We don't want to do that to you. Yeah. Um, so this is called Sweet Rims. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to introduce four of our fantastic brass players from the Port Angeles Symphony Orchestra. It's the Port Angeles Symphony Brass Quartet. You see how I did that? And uh, so we have Scott Meredith and John Stava on trumpet, Matthew Gray on trombone, and Tyler Benedict on tuba, playing a piece called Morgan Musik, or Morning Music, uh, that is the time of day, um, by Paul Hindemith, wonderful, very important. 20th century composer whose language is idiosyncratic. I think you'll enjoy this. It was written for uh, basically uh, to celebrate the sunrise and to be played from towers, and I think this is a wonderful setting for that music. Thanks.
Thank you. And now we'll close out with a song from our Lower Clallam Elwha dance. Good, good afternoon, Francis Charles, Tribal Chair for Lorelwa. A little bit change here. I want to go ahead and, and say some of the closing remarks, and then we, we have the singers um, close out with a song, is, is part of our culture on that part. But really, my hands go up to all of you all of you for taking on the challenges that we have within our communities, within our communities that we have with this beautiful place. As you indicated earlier, just looking at the scenery itself has the beauty of what's here in Port Angeles. I have the vision of all of these canoes coming in, the culture, the heritages that we have that we're rich in, that we're, we really cherish in different ways of the values of what you see today with our little ones. This is what it's about. Our future right here. Our future generations. Our teachers. These are our Clallam teachers. They started when they were smaller than these kids here. They started a lot smaller than that. My daughter she started when she was really small at home in the Head Start program. And now she's a teacher. Jonathan, he started very young as a shaker religion. When he could start walking, they had him ringing the bell in the shaker church religion that he has. Now he's a leader of the shaker church. Now he's a leader in our language programs just as much as our ladies. We have a lot more of our kids, our families that would be here today, but due to orchestras taking place that I know my grandson has to be out here in 15 minutes, <laughs> and the mother's here on that part of it, but we have games going on, and of course we have COVID that's hitting us again. So we have a lot of the families and the challenges that we're all faced with these last few years that's been very hard for all of us, and coming back out of the change, that's the biggest thing is to change that we have in our communities that makes it challenging for us all. But we continue to grow together. We have to do this as a partner. We have to continue down that path. We have these balances that we have to work with. But we can get over it. Look at, look at what's happening here. Look at what's going on in Port Angeles. Look at, at the growth. We see a lot of changes with these buildings. We see a lot of changes with the growth that's taken place. We have the city sitting here with us that we're a partner with. We have our dignitaries here that knows the territory here that grows with us. And I'm very humbled to know them all. But I have to look at my grandkids. I got to look at them. No different than you grandparents. No different than you parents no different than everybody else out there, of what is the growth that we want to achieve for our future generations. That's what I look at. Those are the judgments that I take as a tribal leader of the enrichment of our culture. You heard Steve, and I thank Steve for being here. I'm waiting to meet his family. That is afar. That is afar. And having him come here with the open mind and the goals that he has visualized, that he has felt in his heart, it's all from the heart of what he sees that can transpire with this place, no different than you, the orchestra, the music, the art. When I think of art, I think of the cultural sides of it. I think of our bead working, I think of the regalia making, I think of the drum making, I think of the 
Peninsula College with the outreaches that we can teach to train the Heritage Center that we utilize, having Linty with us. The goals that we can achieve together is something that we really admire. Our tribal council, our elders, we lost so many of them, so many of them that had these visions of what could transpire down here. But yet we have the unity that we can work together with and the unity we want to teach them. We want to teach them on that aspects of it. No different than what you want to teach your grandkids. No different than what you want to visualize for what's going to happen down here. Our inner tribal relations that we have, they're waiting for the day to come over here again. We're glad to see those borders open up. There's that invisible line out there. That's our relatives that are over there. No different than across the mountain, no different than that. We take those paths. It's an opportunity for our youth to take that leadership. It's an opportunity to help you understand who we are and where we're coming from. It's an opportunity with what's out here. It's all medicine. Everything out there is medicine to us. These are the things that we want to share within our culture because each one of us is unique in our own manner, no different than your neighbor is to you. But my hands go up to all of you, to the dignitaries, to all of you that set forth and put your names on these plaques because we have a job to do with our longhouse. We have a job to do with our chuitsen. We have a job to do out here in Edis Hook. We have a job to do with the hotel. We have a job to do with the Heritage Center. Please take the time to go visit the Carnegie. That is something we want to do down here just as much to do the show and tell of the artifacts that come from the Chuitsen Village site. To be able to share that knowledge and that history of what's being taught to our little ones. It's something that we want to transpire to all of you. And we're open. Ask the question. Come to us. We're willing to come to you as we are today. But my hands go up to all of you. And I raise it to my dance group. Normally we have 150, 150 dancers of all ages that come. And those are the days that we're looking to see that happen out here. That's going to be the day when you open this place up that you're going to see some of those come from afar. Come from afar. So with that, I just want to say Hotnitsin, thank you. Thank you all for coming here, for the distance that you have come. And I'll, I'll go ahead and ask them to do the closing song here because that's what they do is they close us out in a good way, in a good way. Hotnitsin, thank you.
Thank you all. Thank you so much. Together, we can get this done. Together, we've come this far. Thank you for being here. We're glad to be with you on this journey. Please stay and uh, have some words, have a little social time with each other, and thanks again.